Are you ready to take your next year's project live? In this comprehensive guide, we're diving deep into the world of application deployment, showing you step by step how to launch your next year's application on Versal, the ultimate platform for hosting modern web applications. In this project, we'll deploy a simple next year's user management web app, which allows us to perform CRUD operations over details stored in a MongoDB database. We will cover everything from setting up your Versal account to configuring your next year's project for deployment. We will also see how to check application logs and debug any production issues that might come up post deployment. If this topic interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel as I post similar content every other week. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. So here we are on the homepage of versal.com and to start deploying our application first we'll have to click on start deploying here and to import a git repo you need to have a repository present either on github gitlab or bitbucket since we have pushed our code to github i'll click on continue with github you'll notice that a new versal account would be created that is connected to our github repository you can see that it also picked up my git username now let's go ahead and import our project here so to deploy a new project, we need to import an existing Git repository or start with one of the templates. We'll be clicking here on select a Git namespace and clicking on add GitHub account. This will open a pop-up which is asking for the permission of installing Versal on my personal GitHub account. Now I can apply to all of my repositories which are currently present and the ones that I will be creating in the future or I can only install it for select repositories. So I'll click on select repositories and select our newly created for user management which we named as user management next.js then we'll scroll down and click on the install button i'll type out my password here to confirm access and then click on confirm password now we have successfully added our github account now i'll be clicking on the import buttons so that our code base can be imported here onto versal now as you can see here it automatically picked up the framework preset that i want to go ahead with which in our case is obviously next.js but there is a drop down list of the other kind of applications too that you can choose to deploy by using Versal. So we'll leave the framework preset as Next.js itself. We'll leave our project name to also the default project name. Now our root directory path is also correct since we've placed everything on the first level of the folder structure itself. If for example, let's say there were multiple projects present within the same repo, you could have chosen to edit this root directory, but we'll leave it as it is. Then we have build and output settings. Here we can choose to edit the build command, the output directory and the install command. So by default, the build command is npm run build or next build, which is correct. We can choose to override the command by clicking on this toggle here and giving our own custom command. But since next build is the correct one, I'll leave it as it is. Also the output directory directory is the default next.js output directory which is basically your dot next folder that we had in our application and then we have the npm install command and since we are using npm instead of yarn or pnpm we'll be keeping it as npm install now the next option is to add environment variables now this is the important bit because we made sure that we did not commit our dot files which was storing the secrets onto git and we had specifically added instructions in our dot git ignore file to ignore any of the dot env files so versal allows us to add our environment variables here in the configure project tab itself we just need to provide the key names along with their values and they are encrypting the values for us so they will be stored as encrypted text instead of just plain text so you do not have to worry about the security of your environment variables because they will be stored in an encrypted form. So let's go ahead and add the important environment variables that we needed. So first one is MongoDB username. We'll add the key name and its value app user. Then we'll add the second environment variable, which is MongoDB password and copy its value. Click on add. Now the third one is the MongoDB host name. For our MongoDB host name, we were referring to the other environment variables within the string value itself. I'm not sure if this will still be supported on Versal. So just to be on the safer side of things, I'll put the actual values of MongoDB username and password. And then copy the entire string and paste it on our value field. Now you can choose to add any other environment variables too. For example, we had a 
dummy environment variable called next public secret which you can just go ahead and add since this is prefixed by the next public keyword this environment variable will also be accessible on the client so be very careful about what secrets you are adding with next public keyword i'll click on add and that's basically the last step now all i have to do is simply click on the deploy button and versal will run the build stage check stage and then once the build is successfully done it will assign a new domain name to our app application and we'll have an live endpoint to which our application will be deployed to but before we do that i'm going to make sure that i've actually committed all of the necessary changes to git and push them onto our repository let me quickly just do that i've committed all of the necessary changes and now i will be pushing these changes to our github repository and as of now our application works without any issues with the correct environment variable so environment variable we've already injected let's now click on the deploy button and see what happens happens so you'll notice that the deployment has been queued and it's currently in the build stage now a lot of the logs in the build stage will be pretty familiar because what versal here is essentially doing is that it's first installing all of your dependencies and then running the next build command to generate a production ready build so as of now it was done installing all of the dependencies using npm install and now it's building your application by running the next build command Again, the logs will be pretty familiar. We have already seen all of these logs being generated on the terminal when we used to run npm build. Now, once the build is finished, it will run the checks and then assign an endpoint to our application. And as you can see, the deployment was pretty fast and our application is actually deployed on the internet using Versal with just a few simple steps. Now we can go to the dashboard for our deployment. So let's go ahead and click on go to dashboard. Here on the dashboard, you can check out the build logs again if you want to. So the build logs will have the NPM install and the next build steps logged out. You can also check what all static and server side pages were generated and there were no checks that we had integrated into our build pipeline yet so there was no check stage but it did assign a new domain to our application which is basically this particular domain let's go back to the dashboard you can click on view domains to see what domain was assigned to our deployed instance which is basically this particular endpoint now you can see the status here is ready it's having a green color which means we are good to go and our deployment was created four minutes ago the branch that we deployed off of was main branch and this is the name of the last commit that we had made to our application let's go ahead and finally open our application on the web so we'll click on this particular link and click on visit so you'll notice here that the endpoint name that was assigned consists of the repository name which is user management next.js followed by some unique identifier followed by my github account name it's a three level domain name so we have the unique identifier followed by dot versal dot app so there are three levels to it so this domain name has multiple subdomains to it and that's just the default way versal assigns a domain name we can now check if everything is working fine and we can actually navigate around and perform actions on the deployed instance so let's go ahead and click on list users and we got the error that the serverless function timed out and it also said that our connection is working correctly and versal is also working correctly so there might be some other server side issue we can see what the actual issue was by going back to the dashboard here we'll click on functions and see the real-time logs that our application server generated we'll click on errors and you'll see here what error log was logged out on the server and as the error message says that the get api timed out so this is probably a database issue more precisely the issue is that we have not whitelisted the ip through which a database can be accessed with so you might remember when we defined the access rules for our database we only whitelisted the ip of our own systems and that's why as of now the deployed application is not able to connect to the database let's go ahead and fix that we'll open mongodb atlas and sign in to our account and once we are logged in we'll go to the network access section here we'll click on add ip address and click on allow access from anywhere so what it does is that it will allow connection to our database from any system that has the correct credentials now this is not recommended usually what we do is that we only whitelist the machine on which we are deploying our project but for now let's test things out by allowing access from all ip addresses 
and click on confirm. The change is being deployed and it's in pending state currently. Once it becomes active, we'll test our application again. Now it's active. Let's go back to the home page of our deployed application and click on list users again. And as you can see now, we are able to successfully navigate to the list users tab and it's showing all of the details of the users that are currently present in the application. We can also test the create user functionality. So let's go ahead and create a new user. So I'll create our usual test user, John Doe and click on the submit button. We got the alert back saying that the user was created successfully. So we got a success 200 response back without any server errors. Now let's navigate back to our list users tab. And you can see here that John Doe was actually added to the database and can now be listed on the list users table. And that was basically it. We were able to successfully deploy our user management app on the web by using Versal. If this video helped you, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.